What's up, TBS crew? It's your boy, Steph, back with another reaction. This time, we have Mr. Haunted. Two short, creepy Uber stories, true scary stories, uploaded September 28th, 2019. Y'all already know all the links are going to be in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. I made some bomb-ass Kool-Aid yesterday. This shit fire. Even if I didn't, even if I didn't have a car, I still probably wouldn't take Uber. I'm too suspicious of shit like that, especially when you hear these true horror stories from personal experiences. I was 24 years old when this happened, and I'd recently started my first job as an Uber driver. Being an Uber driver was easy for the most part, but you'd eventually get to a point where you were tired of constantly picking up people and putting a fortune's worth of gas in your car. It would have been great if Uber paid for the driver's expenses, but we were independent contractors under their platform, so we had to pay for gas. The pay was okay for the most part, but you might as well consider Uber as a side job to earn a little extra cash on the side. I'd mainly do Uber during the night, as I'm a full-time college student with bills to pay, so it wasn't all fun and games. Anyway, i constantly be picking up people everywhere in my city. I picked up motorists, people from parties or nightclubs, and you'd sometimes get your occasional creeps who'd stare at you for no apparent reason. However, there was this one woman who I picked up that really gave me second thoughts about working for Uber. It was a Wednesday, I believe, and I was driving around waiting for someone to request me for a ride. A few minutes went by, and I got a notification from Uber letting me know that someone had requested me. I hopped into my car and eventually pulled up to a woman who looked to be in her mid-thirties. Just by looking at her, I could tell that something seemed off about her. She wore some jeans and had a black t-shirt that had holes all over it. Her hair was a mess and I could make out what looked to be faint marks on her. She went over to my car and asked in a soft tone if I was her Uber driver. I told her yes and to hop in the back. As soon as she did, she kept on giving me this stare, as if she seemed upset about something. Like I said before, you'd occasionally have some creeps, so in my mind, I thought she was one of them. She told me the address, and we went on our way. I then began to notice that she kept looking around my car for no apparent reason, as if she were looking for something. I keep all of my valuables with me at all times, and the valuables that I do have in the car were all kept safe in the glove compartment. Good. She kept looking around while fidgeting with her fingers, like she was anxious. Whenever I'd asked if she was okay, she'd immediately stop and raise her voice to tell me that everything was fine. Not in a rude way, just a formal way. Out of nowhere, she kept on saying things to herself, repeating them over and over again. I assumed that she had some sort of mental disorder, so I tried to be respectful and mind my own business. But that all changed when she started screaming at the top of her lungs. She began hitting me, grabbing my shirt, trying to scratch me, and doing anything she could to cause harm to me. I told her that she was done and ordered her to get out of my car before I called the police. She started to cry and sob and began to apologize, telling me not to kick her out. Fuck that. Even though I felt somewhat bad, I still couldn't chance it because I knew that she was going to end up doing it again. Of course. She got out of my car, and I spit off and reported the incident to Uber, and I don't know what they did after that. Probably nothing. All I could say is, that woman is mentally insane. Whenever it comes to a woman jumping on a man, unless she almost killed him with a weapon, they're not going to take it seriously. Most times, that's not for everybody. This took place in Massachusetts in 2017. For some context, I've been an Uber driver ever since the company first started, and at that time, I was paying rent for a small one-bedroom apartment that I could barely afford. I had a main job that paid relatively well, but it still left me financially unstable, so I had to look for a second job to pay the rent. Since I live in a small town in Massachusetts, there weren't a lot of places that had job offers, and the places that did either denied my application or never called back. After weeks of trying to find a second source of income, 
I give up and eventually tried Uber as the pay was decent as long as you played your cards right. For the first few weeks, it went pretty well. Most people were friendly, but if you would be somewhat rude, and you'd occasionally get your fair share of creeps, but that's expected when you pick up people in a big city like Boston. However, there was this one person that I remember picking up that would always stick with me. It was a Friday night, and I was heading home after dropping somebody off. It was really late, so my mind was focused on getting home and throwing myself into bed, but that all went away when I received a notification from the Uber app on my phone. It said that someone five miles away requested me to pick them up. I let out a deep sigh and just wanted to go home, but I realized that it was more money, so I stupidly accepted and drove to his location. My GPS took me to the very rural side of the city. Abandoned buildings, graffiti, gang members, you know the type of place I mean. The hood. I pull up to the person who requested me, and he immediately gets into my car and hands me a small piece of paper with what I assume to be an address written on it. I ask him, so is this the place we're going to? He slowly glances over to me and nods his head, indicating that it meant yes. Without hesitation, I plugged in the address and started making my way over there. All the while, I kept on getting weird vibes from the man who was in my car. He kept on staring at me with a look I can't even begin to describe. Eyes open wide with a blank expression. Every time I tried to make eye contact with him, he'd immediately turn away to make it seem like he wasn't looking at me by either looking at his phone or maybe texting. Sometimes I tried to ignore his stare, but he gave off such a weird, unsettling vibe that I didn't like. Eventually, my GPS led me on a road in practically the middle of nowhere. See? The only things visible were trees in all directions. See? Not many places like that in Massachusetts, but they exist. As I'm driving down the road, I hear the man say, You know, you could just let me off here. I explained to him as to why he would want me to drop him off here and not at his destination. Just drop him off. But he insisted that it's better if I dropped him off here. With a confused look, I unlock the doors and he gets out of my car, still shooting me that constant stare. Stop asking questions. I then hear him say, Actually, uh, can you get out of your car? What? I no. Show you something. No. At no. this point, I'm officially creeped out. You better and not. Suspicion grew on me more and more the you, longer I stayed there. You better not. I politely said no and that I had to get home. Drive off. But he asked the same question again, this time in a much more demanding tone. Fam, drive off. For whatever reason, I look out the window and see two men peering from the trees with them wearing what appeared to be masks. See? If it weren't for my headlights, I wouldn't have seen them as it was practically pitch dark out. No. Once I spotted them, however, they quickly hid back in the trees. I explained that I had to get home, and the man leads in closer and says five words that still haunt me till this day. You gotta go. You made the right decision. Till this day. I still don't know what would have happened to me had I gone into those woods with those men. I still have several explanations as to what I encountered that night. I'm not sure if it was people trying to mess with me, some sort of inbreeding house somewhere in the woods, a cannibalistic group, or even some type of cult. I don't know, and I definitely won't be returning to find out. That threw me off. As soon as he would have got out, I would have sped off. What's the point of lingering around? You want to get out here? Other than at your exact destination? Fine. Cool with me. That does lead to the question, why did he want to get out earlier than his destination? Uh, earlier than his destination. But then again, I don't know. Because in a way... It sounds like his friends or whoever these associates of his were that were farther up the street, that was closer to the exact destination. So had you took it, uh, taken him there, they probably would have jumped you. So he said he go, he's going to get out here so you don't go all the way up there where more than likely you would have got jumped, robbed, and possibly killed. So in a way, did he save you or... But then again, I can't really say that he saved you because 
he asked you twice to get out of the car. He demanded you get out the car. And then he told you, you made the right decision. So he's basically warning you that you made the right decision by not getting out. I don't know. I don't know. That that kind of confused me. What do y'all think? I, I feel like he, this, this stranger helped the Uber driver survive. But then at the same time, he said it loud enough, you know, get out of the car or something like that. Loud enough so his cohorts and the trees could overhear him trying to get this person out of the car just to make it seem like he was actually about to do the dirt that they are all you know going to conjoin to do i don't know that story was kind of confusing what do y'all think was this was this guy in the last story was he trying to help the uber driver by asking to get out or was he literally tr just trying to set him up even more or her I, I forgot which gender it was but by asking them to get out of the car twice I'm assuming it was a woman, but it could have been a man. But what do y'all think? That kind of confused me. What, but what do y'all think? Give me y'all uh, opinion of that story. Thank you so much, guys, for watching my video. If you enjoyed the reaction, leave a like, a comment, and share the video. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel, join the TBS crew, and tap that bell icon so you will get notified every time your boy Steph drops new content, which I do on a weekly basis. That is all I got for y'all this time around. Your boy Steph is out.